There once was a boy from the sky. He snuck through the grass oh so sly. He threw a red ball to capture them all, then jumped on a bird which used fly. Hey guys, James here again with another game review, this time talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus, the newest entry in the Pokemon franchise. This time around though, they finally changed up the classic Pokemon formula, taking out random encounters, and also making a number of gameplay changes to give the series a fresh coat of paint. Overall though, while the game does have its fair share of issues, I'd be lying if I said I didn't really enjoy it. Pokemon Legends Arceus really does feel like the next evolution of the Pokemon franchise, and I, for one, hope they continue with the Pokemon Legends series. So, without further ado, let's dive into this review. So this time around, the story is a bit different than your standard Pokemon affair. Rather than being the new kid who moves into a small town, you're the new kid who falls from a mysterious rift in the sky and scares the heck out of a bunch of people in Jubilife Village. Jubilife is a quaint little village in the land of... Hisui? Hisui? Hisu? I'm not sure exactly. And this later becomes the Sinnoh region, which you find in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Right off the bat though, first impressions of the game were... not the best. Maybe it's just me, but the introductions in recent Pokemon games just feel like a slog to get through. There's just way too much talking, the tutorials are not very well designed. I really feel like they could have easily condensed and streamlined the whole thing into one quick 5 minute tutorial, but instead it took about half an hour to finally get into the real game and be set free. And oh baby, how good it felt to be free. So like I mentioned before, there are a couple of major changes to this game when compared to past Pokemon games. Of course, the big selling point of the game was the change to a Breath of the Wild style open world. However, after playing the game, while I do think aesthetically the game is reminiscent of Breath of the Wild, the way the open world is built is very different. I would say the open world here in Arceus is more in line with 3D Mario games, and maybe most appropriately, Monster Hunter games. Rather than one giant open world to traverse like in GTA, here you have a hub world which allows you to travel to a number of different open regions of the map. Each of these individual regions acts as a stage where you're free to roam and adventure, and man, this core gameplay loop is just so good. This is because of another major change, doing away with random encounters and making Pokemon more of an action game. Now, Pokemon walk around in the wild like real living beings. You on the other hand can sneak around in the grass and try to catch them using a variety of different Pokeballs you can craft or buy. You actually have to aim the ball too, and as a result, the act of catching Pokemon is far more satisfying now and maybe a bit reminiscent of the Pokemon Snap reboot that came out last year. It's honestly crazy how much this one change affects the whole game. For one thing, it makes the game far more immersive, and now you truly feel like you're in the Pokemon universe. Every Pokemon has their own personality and interactions, and it was fun to be able to see these in action. Even so, while I did like how Pokemon would act in the wild, I do feel like there's a lot of room for improvement here. As of now, the Pokemon kind of feel like tokens that spawn into the world and repeat a couple of the same actions over and over again until you interact with them. I really would have liked to have seen more organic interactions, such as Pokemon interacting with each other, Pokemon living in realistic groups, and just a wider variety of actions in general. The removal of random encounters also really changes the power dynamic of the game. In past Pokemon games, it really felt like you were an oppressive force. You'd run around the grass for hours trying to find the exact Mon that you want, and slaughter your way through a bunch of innocents to get there. Here though, while you still are an oppressive force in a lot of ways, you do need to be a bit more careful with how you navigate. If you ever get caught out by the wrong Pokemon, you can end up in danger. A smart addition in this regard is the inclusion of Alpha Pokemon, which are essentially larger, more scary versions of Pokemon you might find in each region. Just something to note though, they aren't necessarily more powerful stats-wise, but they do tend to be higher leveled than other Pokemon in the area, and also are far more aggressive. Another positive of this action-based system, of course, is that it's now far easier to avoid Pokemon if you want to. I know this is something that veterans of the series are really enjoying, as they no longer have to deal with caves full of Zubats. The change to a more action-based game has also resulted in a much quicker pace, as you no longer need to go through level-up messages and learning moves nearly as often. In fact, I'd say that catching Pokemon here is the easiest it's ever been, as often, you don't even need to battle a Pokemon in order to catch it. This also makes it possible to do a semi-pacifist run, if you really wanted to. Leveling up is also way faster than before. Now, after catching any Pokemon or winning a battle, all Pokemon in your party will gain experience. And honestly, while some people might think this might make the game too easy, I actually think it's a great quality of life change. Of course, catching Pokemon is only half the battle. So while catching Pokemon has become far more action-based, the battling system remains the same in a lot of ways, but there are some changes which help to add a bit more flavor. In Arceus, we still have turn-based battles, but battles are now significantly faster paced. Part of the reason for this is the fact that Pokemon just seem to do a lot more damage than before. Even if you're underleveled or use moves that aren't super effective, 
you can very easily one or two shot enemy Pokemon. This goes both ways though, and as a result, Arceus actually ends up being maybe the most difficult Pokemon game that at least I've ever played. Additionally, adding the fact that you can't exactly find Pokemon Centers to heal, and as a result, this was without a doubt the most potions and revives I've ever had to use in a Pokemon game. To complement the faster paced game, they also introduced a cool new mechanic called Agile and Strong Styles. After your Pokemon Master moves, they gain the ability to swap to Agile and Strong versions of the moves. Agile moves do less damage, but have a higher action speed value, and if your Pokemon is fast enough, it may allow you to attack multiple times in a row. Strong moves, on the other hand, increase the damage of the move, but decrease your speed. With these two styles, you can combo moves together in order to efficiently defeat enemy Pokemon. Not only that, Agile moves are also useful if you ever need to just do a bit more damage before throwing a Pokeball. Overall, I think this is a really cool change that goes well with the quicker style of battling. Another thing which can make these battles extra difficult is the fact that you'll often find yourself outnumbered. In some wild Pokemon encounters and trainer battles, you might find yourself in one versus multiple Pokemon situations. These can definitely be a bit scary, but it did help to make the game feel a bit more difficult, which I actually liked. The only thing I realized that maybe I don't really like about how Pokemon battles work is the experience system. I found myself getting a bit annoyed at how, if your Pokemon faints, they don't get any experience. I know it's always been like this and pretty much every RPG game works the same way, but to me, it really doesn't make sense when you might have one Pokemon sweep through an entire team, but because they get knocked out by the final guy, they suddenly don't get any experience. Meanwhile, all the other guys on my team who contributed squat to the battle get all the benefits for none of the work. I think maybe to complement the quicker style, it would have been nice to get experience after knocking out individual Pokemon, rather than for each engagement as a whole. Regardless, I really enjoyed the battle system and only wish that there were more trainer battles. Legends Arceus also does move the franchise to a more traditional RPG in a lot of ways. Throughout the game, you'll get a number of main story quests and side quests which you can track through your log. For the most part, uh, I mean the quests are okay. Most of them follow the same mold. Find and collect an item, catch a Pokemon, show someone a Pokedex entry. To be honest, there weren't many side quests that I found particularly memorable, but at least they were useful in giving you goals and helping you to catch Pokemon and explore the world. Another big thing they've changed is the removal of hidden moves. Instead, in this game, you'll unlock different noble steeds who you'll be able to ride. This includes one to ride across the land, one to surf the seas, one to climb mountains, and one to soar through the skies. Again, here I think this was a nice change as no one really wanted to use HM slaves, and I also think the way they're implemented is really well done. Switching between the different modes of transportation is very quick and easy, and they even give you a couple of different challenges to help you practice this. My only wish here is that they would have allowed us to throw Pokeballs from the Steeds, but I sort of understand why they didn't. Another major change is the removal of EVs. Traditionally, Pokemon would develop their stats differently based on the Pokemon that they battled. Here though, they added the Grit system. Basically, throughout the game you get Grit Dust, which you can give to your Pokemon to increase their effort values in the stats that you want. You can obtain more Grit Dust by releasing Pokemon that you don't want to use. Again, I think this is a good change as it gives players more control and flexibility over their Pokemon's development. Another great change is allowing people to easily change their Pokemon's moves. Unlike previous games where Pokemon would forget old moves that they learned, here, all Pokemon have a library of moves which you can choose from and switch between at will. There's also a dojo in town where you can purchase moves that you typically wouldn't be able to learn. Think of this as a hybrid between the Move Tutor and the TM system from previous games. Here, you can also help your Pokemon master moves, unlocking the ability to use agile and strong versions of the moves. Of course, evolving and trading Pokemon is still a huge part of the game. You can still trade here, but they also have a store where you can purchase special items, such as evolution stones and other evolution items. One important one is the trade cable, which allows you to basically do a trade evolution by yourself, so that's good if you don't have any friends. You can only get these items using merit points, a currency earned by helping other trainers. Essentially, if you were to die out in the field, whether it be from falling, drowning, or blacking out, you'll drop your satchel and some of the items within. These satchels are left out in the field and can be recovered by other players, which grants merit points to them, and potentially some items as well. Finally, in this section I want to discuss some quality of life stuff I really wish they had addressed. For one thing, let's talk about the satchel guy. For those who haven't played yet, on all the maps you can collect different resources which can be used for crafting and whatnot. You have a satchel with limited space where you can hold things while in the field. To upgrade your space, you have to talk to this one dude who teaches you to increase your inventory. For a price. Obviously, this is one of the most important things to buy in the game, and Satchel Guy knows this too, based on these exorbitant prices. If you thought Tom Nook was bad, get a load of this guy. The issue though isn't even the prices. The main issue is just the fact that you need to keep going through the same messages over and over again to upgrade one spot at a time, rather than letting us do multiple at a time. Another thing which I can't believe Pokemon still hasn't figured out yet is the box management system. 
Since you can only ever carry 6 Pokemon at a time, any unused ones are kept in pastures. This system is seriously so outdated and hilariously bad. There's no easy way to sort Pokemon across multiple boxes, you pretty much have to do everything manually, the filtering and search system is awful, the multiple selection system is awful, you can't choose which box to send Pokemon to by default. They seriously created the system in 1996 and told Pokemon fans to just deal with it. Alright, so here I'm going to talk a bit about the story, but I won't spoil much other than the basic premise. In Arceus, you play as a trainer who somehow falls through a strange rift in the sky. You're discovered by a professor who helps you join Team Galaxy, a faction that's working to develop the land and learn more about Pokemon. On your journey, you find that something is causing the region's noble Pokemon, essentially the equivalent of gods or titans, to freak out. Your job, of course, is to get down to the bottom of it. One thing I want to quickly discuss here would have to be the noble Pokemon fights. These essentially act as boss battles for each region you visit. These battles though are actually far different from the usual turn-based battles you go through. Instead here, you play through action sequences, throwing items at the nobles, dodging their attacks, and then finding opportunities to send in your Pokemon to fight. These boss battles are very reminiscent of Monster Hunter fights, and some are actually surprisingly difficult. While I did enjoy the fights, I also feel like that they could have been more varied in their attack stages, and it would have been nice to have had more battling involved. I also found some to just be a bit underwhelming. With regards to the story though, honestly, it's a bit of a mess. I don't think it's nearly as bad as some people are making it out to be, but it's just pretty poorly written. It's kind of a slog to read through, and it's just a bit cliche. Despite that, there was still some pretty funny moments throughout the game, and there was just something enduring about a world that is only just starting to learn about Pokemon. Besides, who's really playing Pokemon for the story anyway? Finally, let's talk about some of the technical stuff. Honestly, this is probably one of the areas I have the most complaints. Overall, I just feel like the package as a whole seems… kinda cheap. For one thing, it just kinda gives you this knockoff Breath of the Wild vibe through a lot of it, while not looking nearly as amazing. There were legit times during the game where I was thinking to myself that this looks like a DS game. There are also just some things that seem so super lazy it's insane. It really feels like they went with the bare minimum in terms of assets and animations. They constantly reuse the exact same villager assets, and don't get me wrong, I get that games will do that, but a bunch of these villagers are people you actually interact with and take quests from, rather than just being generic NPCs that walk around town. There was this one quest that stuck out to me where you have to bake muffins to feed to an Eevee. And like, dude, you really couldn't take the muffin design you already have and animate the Eevee grabbing and eating it? It's honestly embarrassing, and small details like that would have made the whole package that much better. Personally, I didn't really notice performance issues, although sometimes with Pokemon far in the distance you might notice that they get a little bit choppy, but it wasn't something that I thought ruined my experience or anything. With regards to the sound design, again, I had some issues here. Like dude, how do you not have any voice acting at all? Not even some grunts or exclamations? It made some interactions and scenes just feel so empty and hollow. The music on the other hand is a bit of a mixed bag. Don't get me wrong, I actually like the music and I don't think it's bad by any means, but I just felt like some of the songs felt like they didn't really fit with the situations you were in. One that always gets me was this riff that you'd sometimes hear at night that sounds like something that would appear on a site that starts with a P and ends with a hub. I also kind of disliked the Jubilife Village theme. Again, not a bad song, but the repetition of it just got really annoying over time. Overall, despite my criticism and some very clear issues with the game, I do think that this is still a very fun game. And Maybe I'm crazy, but this might be the most fun Pokemon game yet. The new action-based gameplay is just a change that fits so well with the series and is honestly something that's been long overdue. Again, while there are a number of issues that they should address in any sequels, I have to say that this is a great step in the right direction for Pokemon, and we just gotta pray that they can build on top of this. Me personally, I do think Pokemon Arceus is worth the $60 price tag, and it should fairly easily give you at least 20-30 to 30 hours of gameplay for that price. I'm giving Pokemon Arceus a 3 out of 4. Again. I think the game is very fun, but because of a number of issues, I did have to deduct a point. But hey, that's just me. Have you tried Pokemon Arceus and what did you think of it? And of course, if you made it this far, I truly do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it really helps out my channel. And as usual, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.